Trump has a bad week, but can't tweet about it. Did it really happen? The answer is yes. It was an avalanche of bad news for the former president. The New York Attorney General leveled new claims against the Trump family business, and the Supreme Court allowed more than 700 documents from the presidential records to be sent to the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. How is all of this factoring into the former president's political ambitions? Well, joining me now, two former Trump insiders, former White House communications director Alyssa Farah Griffin and former Trump advisor David Urban. So, David, let me start with you, and I'll add another thing to that, and that is a grand jury opening and a criminal probe of President Trump in uh, the former president in Georgia. What should he be most worried about right now? Oh, uh, uh, Dana, look, there's, I, I, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, a wide range of issues that are that are facing the president, and, and I, I've been on this network, as you know, for, for many years, and uh, it, it looked like uh, he was in much deeper trouble at many points in the future, and it all kind of played out, and, and nothing happened. I remember waking up and hearing on the networks, you know, Trump to be indicted this morning, stand by, and then no indictment ever came of it. So I, I'm not putting a lot of credibility or credence and, and not greatly worried about any of these, is he? these current headlines. No, I don't think so. And I, I don't think he should be because there's, you know, we've been, this is like the, Paul, the perils of Pauline. It's we're probably a little bit dating myself from even, uh, even uh, Alyssa has no idea what that is, but you know, there have been, <laughs> she has no idea. And, t -t -t tune into the next episode and we'll see what happens here. And, and, and nothing's ever happened because to a large extent there is no there there and, and I think we'll it'll play out here in, in these cases as well yeah okay so you know this we're making light of it but the reality is that this is these are serious uh, charges oh, I, I, charges but I want to I want to get Alyssa in here because Alyssa uh, you worked in the Trump White House you are cooperating with the January 6th committee give us a sense uh, on the documents uh, that they're going to see, that they are seeing now, they have access to. What might it show investigators? Yeah, it's, it's, it's no question that the January 6th committee is going to loom large over the next couple of years of Donald Trump's life. But I actually surprisingly um, agree with David on this, that what is going to take Trump down in terms of 2024 being the nominee and potentially being the president is less his legal woes and much more just the country's fatigue with him. So there was a really, there's a recent AP poll that showed that only 27% of Americans even want him to run again. So at a time right now when the Biden presidency is frankly on life support, the economy is struggling, we've got this high inflation, this is a moment for Republicans get through midterms, keep him around through midterms, he's a monster fundraiser, but then kind of have a come to Jesus moment and say, what can Donald Trump do that Mike Pompeo, Mike Pence, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley can't do? All of them who are not don't have this cloud of January 6th and have, having led an insurrection on their own. Alyssa, since you worked in the White House uh, at the time, do you uh, have any sense of what he should be most worried about with regard to the documents that the committee now has? Uh, my guess, and this is pure, this is speculation based on kind of what I've observed and read in conversations I've had, which is any sort of coordination with the bad actors that went a step further. So um, this Oath Keepers indictment that charged some of them with sedition and conspiracy, that's significant. If you end up finding that White House individuals were in communication with some of those very fringy groups, I think that's incredibly damning. Do you think it's possible? I think it's possible, but I don't want to speculate. But the other thing I would say is important. Um, I think you're going to see the anatomy of the big lie begin to unfold. When you see more text messages come out of people around Trump who knew the election fraud was a total myth, they were simply humoring him and privately saying, yeah, we can't keep spreading this craziness. I think that chips away at Trump's credibility, and I also think it really gets to him. David, Politico obtained a draft Trump executive order. It was a draft. It's now in possession of the January 6th committee, which would have ordered the acting secretary of defense to, quote, seize, collect, retain and analyze all machines, equipment, electronically stored information and material records relating to the 2020 election. You're a West Point grad. You are close friends with the former Trump defense secretary, Mike Esper. What's your reaction to hearing that? Yeah, so, so Deanna, look, I, I've not seen the document. I, I've not seen the, 
Yeah, I've not even seen the article. I just I, I heard it this morning. Uh, so so I, I don't really know the details of it. Obviously, look, if, 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 as you described, that, that's troubling, but I don't know why they were, you know, what, what the underlying issue was in terms of uh, taking, uh, taking the, um, uh, you know, the voting machines out of control of the states. Perhaps it was the fact that they were, the, the administration felt that they were not um, going to be uh, correctly held in a chain of custody such that um, they'd be preserved for future uh, examination. I, I don't know, uh, but as you said, it was a draft never executed, it was never sent around. I mean, I'm sure there are lots of draft documents done in the government um, that never see the light of day, that uh, there aren't the greatest ideas. But so. David, if I could chime in, I'd be curious, and I hate to put you on the spot, but I know Mike Pompeo, yeah. an old friend of yours, what, what couldn't he accomplish as president that Donald Trump could? And like, could someone like him, like this is what I as a, a conservative wrestle with is, he, let, let's run someone like a Mike Pompeo and we don't have the shadow of conspiracy so, so, and insurrection on our backs. So, so listen, Mike Pompeo or, uh, or your, your, your former boss, the vice president, none of these people are running for president. None of them have said they're running for president. So I'm not going to well, speculate or put people, well, come on. people out there, right? Come on, I'm they're, they're saying, preparing. They're not, they're not running. They're not running for president. Listen, if yeah. Donald Trump yeah. didn't run, Don't, they probably Don, would. Donald, Exactly. And if a lot of people didn't run, someone else might run. Donald Trump is still the dominant force in Republican politics. It, it, Alyssa just admitted it. People, he's a monster fundraiser, a monster presence in the Republican Party. I don't expect that the former president is going anywhere in 22 or 24. Donald Trump remains incredibly popular amongst Republican-based voters. I'm, I'm helping my good friend and West Point colleague Dave McCormick in the state of Pennsylvania run for Senate. And I can tell you in the state of Pennsylvania amongst Republican-based voters, Donald Trump is incredibly, incredibly popular. Here in Florida, the state of Florida, Donald Trump is incredibly popular.